Do you feel ignorant because you don't know numbers? You don't know which one go which way and they got all these marks and things on them? I know, honey, it's hard. But there is a solution. Fort Ben Tutoring. And now here go Mr. Whit. Explain math to us, Mr. Whit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Whit with Fort Ben Tutoring. And today's lesson is going to be about solving linear equations with decimals. That's right. You don't want decimals in your equations, and neither do I. So let me show you what I do in order to get rid of the decimals in order to solve a linear equation a lot easier. All right. So here in number one, we have 2 and 7 tenths y equals to 54. So what you want to pay attention to is the smallest place value. That's right. You want to find the smallest place value that's right the furthest away to the right from the decimal that you are the smaller its place value and in this case your seven is in the tenths place that's right one place to the right of the decimal is the tenths place so that being the case I'm gonna multiply the entire equation by 10 let's take a look we're gonna multiply 10 times 2 and 7 tenths y and that's going to be times each and every single term in the entire equation. So I have 10 times 2 and 7 tenths y. I also have 10 times 54. Then, by multiplying by 10, your decimal is going to be moved one place to the right. So this 2 and 7 tenths y is now 27y. Uh huh. And on the right side of our equal sign, 10 times 54 gives me 540. Yeah, so now that I have this, notice that we don't have any decimals left in the equation, which is exactly what we wanted. So all you have to do now is the division principle of equality, and I'm going to divide both sides by 27. Yeah, so anytime I have that coefficient, a number, a value in front of a variable, just divide both sides by that exact same number, and you'll be able to eliminate it, thus isolating your variable. So I bring down my variable y, which now equals to 27 going into 54 is 2, so this will end up being 20. There you go. Here's your red box. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. So there you have it. We started out at number one with 2 and 7 tenths y equals to 54. I multiply both sides by 10 because that's my smallest place value in the original equation. That's right. One place to the right of the decimal is the tenths place, T-E-N-T-H-S. Mm -hmm. So I multiply both sides by 10 in order to eliminate the decimal. That gave me an equivalent equation of 27y equals to 540. And then to solve for this equation, I divided both sides by 27 and y equals to 20. So yeah. That made it a lot easier to me, ladies and gentlemen. I prefer to have equations without decimals. So let's check out the next problem, okay? We have in problem number two, we have negative three and one tenth y equals to 21 and seven tenths. Once again, my smallest place value is one place to the right of the decimal, which is the tenths place. So I'm gonna multiply each and every term by 10. So I have 10 times three and one tenths y equals to 10 times 21 and 7 tenths. Once again, multiplying by 10 will move my decimal one place to the right, and that will eliminate all of the decimals. So 10 times negative 3 and 1 tenths y gives me a result a negative 31y, which now equals to 10 times 21 and 7 tenths, which is 217, just like that. From there, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 31. Okay, and I'll have my variable isolated, so I now have y equals to a positive divided by a negative is a negative, and it just so happens that 31 goes into 217 seven times. So my result here is negative 7. Here's your red box. There you go. All right, just like that. That's problem number two. Let's keep it moving, ladies and gentlemen. We have problems to go through. All right, let's check it out. So here in problem number three, I have x minus 9 hundredths x equals to 728. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I'm once again looking for the smallest place value when it comes to the decimals. And here, I am not only just one place from the decimal, I'm two places from the decimal with this 9 hundredths. Two places to the right of the decimal is the hundredths place. That's right, the hundredths place. So that means I'm going to be multiplying each and every term times 100. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I'll be able to eliminate every decimal in the equation. All right, let's do that. So 100 times x is just simply 100x, okay? Then in my second term, multiplying by 100, that moves my decimal two places to the right. Not one, but two. And so I end up with 9x. 
This now equals to 100 times 728 is going to give me a result of 72,800. Okay, so notice we don't have any more decimals in this equation, and now we can just attack it like we normally would. On the left side of my equal sign, I have like terms. So I'm going to combine those. So 100x minus 9x will leave me with 91x. Yes, and that's going to equal to 72,800. Mm hmm, just like that. From there, I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient of 91. So dividing both sides by 91 here, I am able to isolate the variable, which is now x equals to. All right, so let's take a look at this. I know that 9 will go into 72 8 times, and yeah, 1 times 8 is 8. So I'm thinking that I'll have an 8, and then I'll just bring down those two zeros to end up with a result of 800. Mm-hmm. x equals to 800, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I'm about to red box it. There it is. Okay. Let's look at it again. Problem number three. We had x minus 9 hundredths x equals to 728. So instead of dealing with these terms with the decimals in it, I went ahead and multiplied everything by the smallest place value, that hundredths place. So that's why I ended up multiplying each and every term by 100. And keep in mind that terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So this minus sign separates these two terms, which is why I had to multiply x times 100 and the 9 hundredths x by 100 as well. And then over here on the other side of the equal sign, we multiply by another 100. Yeah. So every term was multiplied by 100. That gave me an equivalent equation of 100x minus 9x equals to 72,800. And from there, we just simplified and divided both sides by 91. x equals to 800. All right, let's keep it moving. Next problem. There we go. That's what you've been waiting on, right? A lot more decimals in the problem. Well, here I have 2 and 1 tenths x plus 45 and 2 tenths equals to 3 and 2 tenths minus 8 and 4 tenths x. Mm -hmm. However, notice that your smallest place value in each of these terms is still just the tenths place, which means that I will just multiply each and every term by 10. All right, so here I'm rewriting this as 10 times 2 and 1 tenths x plus. 10 times 45 and 2 tenths equals to 10 times 3 and 2 tenths minus 10 times 8 and 4 tenths x. And that's what I have thus far. All right, from here, I'm going to be moving the decimal one place to the right. Remember, multiplying by 10 moves your decimal one place to the right in each and every one of these situations here. So each of those decimals will be moved one place to the right. I will rewrite this as 21x plus 452 equals to 32 minus 84x. Just like that. All right, now notice how this looks a lot more appealing to my eyes than the original equation because I don't have any decimals. That will allow me to focus on what I need to do next. All right, so I'm going to start by isolating the terms with the variables. So that means I'll be adding 84x to both sides. All right, just going to take my time with this here, all right? Speed is not your friend, so take your time. Make sure you get a slow right answer than a fast wrong answer. All right, so here, left side of the equal sign, I have 21x plus 84x. That's going to give me 105x. This is going to be plus 452, which equals to 32, knowing that these additive inverses here, those opposites, will cancel out. Then I'll be subtracting 452 to both sides. All right, just like that. 452s will cancel out. I'm bringing down that 105x, which now equals to a negative 420, just like that. All right, well, I'll need to divide both sides by the coefficient, that number in front of the variable x. So I'll be dividing both sides by 105. So let's do that. Okay, the 105s will simplify to 1, and that'll be 1x equals 2. I know that a negative divided by a positive is a negative always. And uh, let's check this number out here. 1 times 4 is 4, right? And it just so happens that 5 times 4 is 20. Mm -hmm. Looks like 105 will go into 420 four times, ladies and gentlemen. So my result is negative 4. Red box in it coming up. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Just like that. So remember, we started out with this nonsense up here, all of that madness. And we got rid of all of the decimals by multiplying by the smallest place value, which was, in this case, the tenths place. So we multiplied both sides by 10, all of the terms. And we were done. Yeah. All right, that was problem number four.
Problem number four is done. Here we have problem number five. Problem number five. All right, let me straighten up my screen. Straighten up my screen for you. There it goes. There it goes. All right, so I have one and three hundredths minus sixty-two hundredths x equals to seventy-one hundredths minus twenty-two hundredths x. Yeah, say that five times fast. Well, two places from the decimal is the hundredths place. So notice that I have two places from the decimal here, two places from the decimal here, two places from the decimal here, and two places from the decimal there. Yeah. So even if only one of these terms had at the furthest to the right two decimal places, I would still end up multiplying everything by 100. So it just so happened that they all are two places to the right. So uh, we're going to be multiplying by 100 regardless. So next I'll be multiplying each and every term by 100. So 100 times 1 and 3 hundredths minus 100 times 62 hundredths x equals to 100 times 71 hundredths minus 100 times 22 hundredths x. All right, so this is what I have thus far. Nice and neat for you. And remember, multiplying by 100 moves your decimal two places to the right. You got it. So I'm moving this decimal two places to the right for each and every term. This will give me an equivalent equation that looks like this. It will be 103 minus 62x equals to 71 minus 22x. Yeah. That looks a lot better to me. 103 minus 62x equals to 71 minus 22x. Yeah, I think I can handle that. Yeah, that's a lot easier on the eyes than that original equation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add 62x to both sides, just like this. Mm -hmm. So the 62x's will cancel out. I'll bring down 103, which now equals to 71 plus 40x, just like that. Then I'll be subtracting 71 to both sides. So subtracting 71 to both sides, I end up with 32. And this equals to 40x, just like so. Then dividing both sides by 40, I can simplify this 32 and 40 by 8, ladies and gentlemen. That gives me 4 fifths. But lo and behold, we started out with an equation with decimals, right? So it would behoove us to write our answer with a decimal as well. So generally, the way an equation begins is the way it needs to end, unless they tell you otherwise. So since we began our problem with decimals, we're going to end with decimals. So you can either multiply the numerator and the denominator here by 2 to get 8 tenths, or you could divide the numerator by the denominator. Either way of converting this fraction into a decimal you know, that you're comfortable with, just do it that way. Either way, the answer is 8 tenths. And that's it. Done and done. You know what? This decimal is way too high. Let's lower that decimal. There you go. Red box in it coming up. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. So your answer is 8 tenths. All right. So let's check out the next problem here. Problem number 6. In problem number 6, I have 7 tenths times the quantity of 3x plus 5 equals to 1 and 3 tenths minus the quantity of x plus 4. Now, remember several things. One, we do have decimals involved, and their smallest place value, that one place to the right of the decimal, is the tenths place. Also, that terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So on the left side of the equal sign, we only have one term here. That's it. And on the right side of our equal sign, we have two terms, this 1 and 3 tenths and this negative quantity of x plus 4. So that minus sign is separating these two terms over here. So that lets me know how many times I need to multiply by 10. So in this case, I need to multiply 10 times that one term on the left side and the two terms on the right side here. So I'll be multiplying by 10 because my smallest place value is that tenths place here and here. So multiplying by 10, I'll end up with 10 times 7 tenths times 3x plus 5. This equals to 10 times 1 and 3 tenths minus 10 times the quantity of x plus 4. All right. Next, when I multiply by 10, remember that's going to move the decimal one place to the right. So I'll have that going on here and here. So 10 times 7 tenths is just 7 times the quantity of 3x plus 5. Notice how I'm just bringing down that set of parentheses right now and not distributing. Remember, a slow right answer is a lot better than a fast wrong one. So take your time. This is going to be equal to 10 times 1 and 3 tenths is just 13 minus 10 times the quantity of x plus 4. 
All right, so that's what we have. From here, I will be distributing, that's right, my favorite property in the world, and I'll be circling that negative 10 to showcase that that value is negative. It reminds me. So 7 times 3x gives me 21x. 7 times 5 is 35. This equals to 13. Then negative 10 times x is a negative 10x. Negative 10 times 4 gives me negative 40. So after you finish distributing, that's right, I had those arrows popping, always look to see if you can combine any like terms. And on the right side, I can combine that 13 and that negative 40 together. So I'll bring down 21x plus 35, which equals to, I'm going to bring that negative 10x down first, and 13 minus 40 gives me a negative 27. From here, I want to get all of my variables on the left-hand side. I prefer a positive coefficient, so I'm adding 10x to both sides of my equal sign here using the addition property of equality. And the 10x is canceled out on the right side. On the left side, 21x plus 10x gives me 31x plus 35, which equals to negative 27, just like so. From here, I will be subtracting 35 to both sides and... After doing so, my 35s cancel out on the left-hand side. I bring down 31x, which equals to negative 62. From here, I'll be dividing both sides by 31. Yeah, just like that. And so my 31s will simplify to 1x. So I'll have x equals to, and then on the right side here, negative 62 divided by 31 is going to give me a negative 2. That's right. So that's my answer done and done ladies and gentlemen so what I want you to keep in mind ladies and gentlemen is that when clearing your decimals you're always going to multiply by your smallest place value whether that be the tens place hundreds place thousands place you're, you're always looking for that digit that's furthest to the right of the decimal all right so that's the one that's going to be in charge that's the one that's going to tell you whether you need to multiply by 10 100 or a thousand depending on what place value you're in other than that ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching this is solving linear equations with decimals with Mr. Witt and Fort Bend tutoring Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutormemath.net.